What is up? Welcome to Uncoachable, a podcast for parents and coaches by parents and coaches. Well, you changed it up on me, bro. I, I wasn't did. even ready for it. I was. <sighs> I know. I just, I just, I just hated the way I did the intro last week, so I wanted to do something different because okay. I was not high enough energy. I, I, I felt so. Well, fair enough. Okay. All right. All right. Works for me. We're uh, all jacked. How up. you doing today? I'm out uh, I, I, stop! Stop changing stuff. You started it <laughs> <laughs> that 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 cackle you hear that is coach lance coach how are you doing today i'm doing well you good i, I am good it took me a second but i am doing well okay. today yes i'm doing had well to check to make sure i'm Joe on Boo had a cigar i'm on day two i'm on day two of keto <laughs> oh. uh-huh day two i've been very good i was planning on fasting tonight and then like we a, started extremely late, and I'm like, I'm I'm not gonna make it with no. just water. So, like I blew out of the water with that monster. Well, you had a bunch of chicken too. You can't eat chicken on a fast, by the way. No, you can't really eat anything on a fast, right? <laughs> that's how it works. That's the whole it? point. Okay. You, they water they say sure. you can do coffee, but black coffee. I, I do water only fasts. Yeah, and that's how it works for me. Yeah. And over here. Skinny guy, Coach Logan. Coach, how are you doing today? Skinny guy be getting big. <laughs> a skinny guy gonna be bigger than us. Yeah, he's getting there. We're sh- we're sh- we're shrinking, and he's eating so, pizza. So you don't really has me driving to do this. Trying to get skinnier than him. Well, no, that has nothing to do with that, actually. In all honesty, part of it is <laughs> is me. It, part of it is like this this fool over here. Okay, so you're doing well. Has dropped twenty plus pounds. Okay. Has first time, as you said, first time seeing a two seven at the beginning of the yeah. of uh, of your your number, if you will, in five years, right? Uh, so yeah. congratulations, because that's awesome. That yeah. that is truly incredible. I don't want to get into it too much, but truly incredible. But I don't I don't look like I weigh two seventy, but and and but the second like the second you told me that, I was like, he can't weigh less than me. <laughs> <laughs> like I fat shamed myself so badly. <laughs> Fat shaming works, man. I, I, I've said that from the beginning. I'm like, man, make fun of me for as fat as I am. Then maybe it'll, I won't eat that. You know, <laughs> that was like, I just don't want to be the fat dad, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's the old uh, Tom Segura right there. <laughs> I'm, not even, I'm not even lying. That's really, truly kind of what you know. It kind of hit me home. I was like, "Oh, I got to do this. <laughs> it's oh, time." Crap, he's within twenty. <laughs> he's with, with, he's within twenty. I'm going up. He's going down. This is not a good sign. The, the one thing that did that did kept me hardcore on keto was being too fat to ride the rides at the water park. <laughs> <laughs> like you told me going to that weekend that you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm anticipating getting off of it just for, you know, for the weekend because I don't want to be too much of a pain. But now you didn't. No. No, you didn't. No. You were good. When I, wa- when I walked, walked in, in, I'm like, you can't be under, you can't weigh over 250 and be on the rides. I'm like, <laughs> well, it looks like I'm getting stuck in this life because I'm going. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're not stopping me. <laughs> Man, you like, no, like no, a, but the first one, the first one, the first ride I went on, they had a scale, and I'm like, son of a bitch. <laughs> Are you quitting? You're kidding me, right? No, just just one ride, did it, it was, was just the one first ride. one that I went on. What? It, but it was it was because like for the ride itself, so it, it was at uh, Great Wolf Lodge, and you go you shoot down, and then it's you're in a, like a tornado kind of thing where you go back and forth, and if you're too heavy, because him, myself, and my wife. The three of us went. We were under the weight limit by six by pounds. six pounds. <laughs> okay, okay, kid you not, six pounds. And when we went down and up, we damn near came to the top. Because you 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 drop off this, you, you come down the the first part of the slide, and it's a straight up drop, like twelve feet. Yeah, and then it goes all the way back up the other side, like a half pipe. It's it's exactly like a half pipe, and then it narrows down, obviously, oh. and with water. But it's so much fun. <laughs> I wish I would have been on the ride when you first went, like your first like, because you had no, you had no I, idea what to no. expect. Kellen's just like, hey, you want to go on this ride with me? And I'm like, oh, okay. And so me and me and Leah and, and Kellen were on it, <laughs> and I was like, I wasn't, I had, I was not ready. You it were was ready my for first anything. ride, and uh, yeah. oh man, you're going so fast. Because so you get in and it, you sit forward to a you can sit forward to a two, but if you but you can only weigh up to seven seven hundred pounds. So if you um, 
so you get in and then they'll put you in and you you go down a small curved tube and then boom you drop off and and it's like you're it's like you're literally dropping 12 feet it's from it's from the curve here and then boom, into a half pipe sick it's yeah. awesome it's so much fun so yeah we went on it you and go as far up the other side as you do down it is and it's fast yeah like i got in it and we just dropped and my stomach dropped and i was like <laughs> 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 however I, I did not have any fun because i was terrified <laughs> she's like make sure you hold on the whole time and it's not negotiable i'm like oh we're, oh, what am I? we're, we're in for some stuff here, i think <laughs> <laughs> it's like the White Rapids at uh, yeah. at uh, Six Flags. Nothing like that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, that's uh, that was uh, that's my story. That's why yeah. I was like, you know what? <laughs> I got to do something. Plus, I felt awful. Like, yeah, I just, it I, sucks, man. Oh, I feel man. so much better. Like I, in these last two days, I know I've been hungry. I, I can't, but I know but it, I know won't. it's but I know it's me mm-hmm. talking. Like it, it's my brain and my body talking to me. With not having the sugars, mm-hmm. and so like I know I've been hungry, but not hungry enough that I'm like I have to have something. Mm-hmm. And if I and I know it's that the sugar, yeah. Once you kick that sugar out, so that's uh, that's the goal. Anyway, sorry we got too much into those things, but uh, that's our life for the last few weeks, guys. Sorry. Yeah. Anyway, we are. Uh... Oh, yes. We almost forgot about Joe Boo. Joe cool. Boo, how are you doing today? You don't say. Okay. Yeah, good. Uh, <laughs> glad, glad we could hear that. Yeah. <laughs> so we're we are actually here. We're probably a little bit distracted, so we're going to apologize. But we are watching Game Three of the World Series, and we are in the bottom of the twelfth with two outs. Justin Turner's walking up to bat. Oh, he looks so much like a yard yard garden gnome. gnome. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like his I'll, wife is hot, and it, he has no reason to have a hot wife. <laughs> <laughs> he lives in L.A. and he plays major league baseball. There's two okay. reasons right there. Yeah, he's, he's a very, very, very talented baseball player. Get your kid a baseball glove. All right. um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into that later. Yeah. Though. Speaking of, uh, <laughs> actually, that was a pretty decent segue for what we wanted to talk about. But why do you always got to point it out, man? We got to work on more Be- work on that because you wanted to move oh, away want, from it. What? I, th- I thought it was a decent segue. And then it was. Like, oh, we're not going to talk about that right now. I'm like, all right, fine, whatever. <laughs> it was a good segue, Actually, but it was a, it, w- it was not the route that you told me we we're going to go. <laughs> <laughs> Segways don't always happen the way we want them to. We know that by now. True. Oh crap! Uh, I guess. Um, <laughs> I, I guess we're on to the next topic. <laughs> Wait, I had more to say. <laughs> all right. So since we're on it, let's talk about it right now. Um, you mean gloves, right? Gloves. Yeah. <laughs> What else were we on? <laughs> Roller skates? Uh, <laughs> Downhill very fast right now. <laughs> Backwards. So um, it, we uh, it, it's it's nearly Halloween right now, as you guys probably know. Uh, by the time you listen to this, it might be Halloween or over or past Halloween by yeah. the time you get to it. Either way, it's important. So it's, it, we're getting close to, obviously, after Halloween, the next is, th- is Thanksgiving and then is Black Friday. And... If you're if you if you're thinking I need to you know my kid needs a new glove let's you know I need to get one for next season now's when you need to be starting to get them okay um, especially a good glove so yeah. is, uh, get it keep going so keep going I'm sorry I'm just because because you need time to break it in um and this is really when you can get a really good deal on a glove yes um. Especially, especially, I mean, especially after the World Series, season's over. It's the off season. They're wanting to dump so they can get their new products in. Yeah. And then Black Friday comes around. You're even getting better deals. I mean, yes, now's the time. Yeah the uh, the 26 percent off of 44 gloves on Black Friday is the best deal you will ever find for anything. 44 gloves. My son has one. You have one. I have one. Logan's son has one. Logan, are you getting yours for Christmas this year? Uh, I will, I think so. I've and if you do, let me let me say this, okay? And this is just from experience. On Friday, you're right. Dang, why'd you have to say that? Twenty six percent off. Twenty six percent off. Yep. Um, I don't. I 
don't know if I'm going to get Kellen a new one or not. Because of our changing colors and whatnot, it bothers me. It doesn't need to be. It's not necessary. I know it's not necessary, but it does bother me a little bit. Um, Because we went with his team colors and his first glove. And... Plus, his is a different leather than any than the new ones because yeah. his the youth leather. Anyway, forty four um, pro gloves. Not a sponsor, by the way. No, not at all. We're not sponsored by any of these companies we're about to talk about. We just really like them. Oh yeah, but uh, I forty four pro gloves. Can I, yeah, I mean, I just for just to kind of put that in perspective to the folks at home. Um, if you wanted a glove the same quality as the the pro series forty four gloves. From like Wilson or Nakona or any name, name Rawlings. Raw, I mean, name the brand. I mean, any girl of that quality. The fact that you didn't say Rawlings first really bothers yeah, me. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> get there, get there, get there. Come on, guy, get there. I was about to say Mizuno first. I, for some reason, Rawlings just was not. In I'm, my head. If you say Mizuno, I'm coming over to the stable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. I'm going to turn your mic off, actually, <laughs> is what I'll do. <laughs> You call me Chris ever one more time. <laughs> <laughs> but what I mean, though, is to get that same quality of glove, you're going to spend over $300. 350 uh, 350 That's what I said. Over, and, at least. And most of the time, they're not. And it's not going to be custom. No. And it's not going to be custom. Exactly. So, um, folks, you're going to get a completely custom glove that's just as high quality as a $500 custom Rawlings and you're going to pay 200 bucks for it and that's not on sale not even to get to get that's not on sale to yeah. get what i everything that so i you wanted so you get that 26% off you're talking like 160 100 after it's shipped to your door 150 to 160 bucks depending and on all the options you get fully customized to however you want it and it'll last you a lifetime if you take care of it yep and let's and let's keep in mind here parents when we're telling you this we're baseball fanatics we love making gloves. We love baseball. Your kid loves baseball, obviously, if they're, if they're playing, especially travel ball. But, and we're not saying to go out, it's, we're not saying to go out and break the bank for a ball glove, because I know you're going to see that. You're going to feel that. My son's was a Christmas present. No, we're going to get there. We're going to get there in okay. a second. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, since we got on the, since we got on 44, we're going to talk about it real quick. I was on the glove builder for 44 for, Two months before I actually took the plunge, and, and only two months. Yeah, well, <laughs> I just I was trying to <laughs> dial down the crazy a little bit. You built I, nine thousand gloves. <laughs> <laughs> it was just it was just fun for me, and I was like, you know, I'm going to buy one of these things. And uh, actually, Santa brought it for me, so that was cool. But um, Santa's a good man. You know, I didn't order it in time. So I got mine on like January 6th and it was like Christmas all over again. <laughs> there was snow on the ground and it really sucked. <laughs> so I have this baseball glove. I have nowhere to go. Uh, but it took me until May. I used it every time I we had baseball practice. I, I started in January breaking it in and it wasn't ready. It wasn't it wasn't a glove that I would trust in a game until at least May. And you were breaking it in with me throwing at you yeah. most of the time. Yeah. So that's and that's a little different than you have with eleven, ten, ten, you know, ten, eleven year olds, nine year olds, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But uh, but um, that's you know. So that that anyway, continue. It takes, Keep going. It takes a long time to break in a glove of, a good of glove. high quality, right? A high quality it, glove, and, a glove that needs broken in. It takes a while. And these gloves parents these gloves they come near i'm gonna say as stiff as a board yeah. oh my god they come stiff i mean yeah. mine's That's mine's, what you want, though. mine's been going on a year and i don't use mine as much because most of the time i'm walking around i'm not playing catch with it too much mm-hmm. that's my issue but um mine's not broken in yet i would not trust i can play with mine in a game but it i, I forced i have to force it closed still yeah because mm-hmm. I, I just haven't done it enough so it's, if that tells you anything parents it's crazy um, one th- one other thing I would recommend before we get too far into it, if you're breaking in a glove, two fingers in the pinky hole, it deepens the pocket. I had Coach Lance do that because I broke in my glove that way, and then he started using my glove for softball, and I said, it's not negotiable. Mm-hmm. The glove's broken with two, two, two fingers in the pinky hole. You have to do it. 
He's like, I just, I, I, can't I absolutely do it. hate it. I just can't, it. It I can't sucks. do it. It's uncomfortable. I, there's no way I can, no, no. And he, well, I guess you don't got a glove. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. Uh, yeah, it hurts my pinkies. It hurts my fingers. Guess what? <laughs> I wish I would have been doing it years, years, years ago because yeah. it's so much more comfortable. In all honesty, it's so much more comfortable. The well, gloves on mm-hmm. your hand better, and you do create a bigger pocket. The You're able to bigger. open it up more, deeper. I feel like it gives you more control of the glove too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's it's a deeper pocket. The ball the ball fits in the glove better that way. Um, so if you have any more questions, I mean it, it's all over. Most of the base if you if you look at um, if you watch a baseball game on TV and you go, well that guy's glove's halfway on his hand. That means he's got two fingers in the big heel. And it's it's just above and beyond. I I I I'm upset that I didn't learn about it until I was in high school. I don't see almost any outfielders that don't do that, especially yeah, outfielders. Especially outfielders. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> the batter just got flipped over. <laughs> What's the of noon? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He uh, was trying to get out of the way. We're doing a podcast here. Not, I'm sorry. So not I turned my head one game. little brief second. Oh, here. Luke Kang's out there now. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> like here, here comes a greasy-haired trainer. Um, so, so check it out. Check it out. So, whoop. <laughs> oh, <laughs> ah, slick right there. Well, that's that's something that we that we need to talk about actually. Yeah, so okay. what just happened is Eduardo Nunez is in the batter's box. The ball's in the dirt. Austin Barnes blocks it, and it goes right towards the feet of Nunez. Nunez is trying to get out of the way of it. Barnes undercuts him, knocks knocks Nunez down. Barnes couldn't get to the baseball. That is not interference because the batter has the right to the batter's box. The whole batter's box, too. The whole too. batter's box. And he wasn't trying to get in the way. He wasn't trying to get in. He was actually actively trying to get out of the way. Yes. Um, it's just and he mean, didn't even have to do that. Right. But also understand... Batters. If, you, if you're instructing your batter to to get out of the way, uh, if they step he, out of that box, he gets into the way out of the batter's box. That's interference. Yep. So on a throw down to third, and you got a right hand batter, he's not moving out of the way. Don't let him. Don't have him move at all. Don't have him move at all. You know, you, that he all. doesn't have to. And we we coach on the idea that he's not going to move. Yeah, we, then, we're going to. We're gonna box basically box him out on the catcher's basically gonna gonna drop step or box out. You have two options and it depends on and all honesty it depends on where the ball's pitched. Yeah. My my theory on it is the only time you tell him really to step out of the box is when your runner from is at third base and is on his way home, actively on his way home. If it's if it's a pass ball right. and you're you have a right handed batter, even a left handed batter. Any batter. I instruct my kids the, the ball gets passed, the runner's coming, run towards a third base coach. Yeah. That's the only way you're really going to make and sure that you're out time, of the way. And that's the only time, right? I mean, is there any other circumstance where you can think of that you would want them to do to do that? No. Okay, that's what I, I just wanted mm-hmm. to clarify. So, okay, so no. I want to make sure everybody only only on a pass ball, right. runner coming that's, home. Right. That's that's exactly that's exactly what I was thinking. I just want to make sure everybody else is aware that that's really really the only time, and and you hear that a lot more often from a lot of. A lot of coaches who probably should and maybe I mean, you know, they obviously don't know better, but they should know better. And you, you hear that from a lot of coaches that get out of the box, get out of the box, get out of the box, get no. out of the way, get out of the way. No, it's I, not. You have the right to the box, and it, you don't have to. There's so many go anywhere. Yeah, so many uh, misguided uh, baseball instructions yeah. that you're going to hear at at. Uh, you know, Sorry for the distraction, guys. Little no. League parts Red Sox and, just scored a run, so sorry and, about that. Um, kind of on a convoluted play, too. Um, but you know, this is this is really the point that we talked about a couple weeks ago of of watching the game, understanding what we're watching when we're watching the baseball game. Um, yeah, Eduardo Nunez is just really taking a beating this <laughs> this this at bat. Uh, he slid uh, into, but you know what? It doesn't hurt very bad when you're uh, when a run scores when and you take scores, a lead in the World Series. Yep. Um, in a tie game. Yeah. So, Luke Kang's back out there though. <laughs> is that the actual name of the guy? No, he just looks like Luke Kang. I don't know who Luke Kang is. <laughs> the the guy from Mortal Kombat. Oh. <laughs> the one that beats Shang Tsung. You're not talking my language right there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, I if, could if go full on. Nerd, if you dude, say Ra- if you say Raiden or Sub Zero, we're 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 talking the same language. But you say Liu Kang. I, 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 Raiden, good call on that. Liu Kang was the fighter that didn't have the sh- that fought with the the like the gaucho pants, but no shirt on. Yeah, yeah, he did the bicycle kick. Let's see, because you. you, get, <laughs> you... <laughs> that's what he did. That's what that's the noise he made when he did the bicycle kick. Just wasn't. I wasn't uh, <laughs> wasn't try, trying to be derogatory. I just come. I mean, I didn't make the game. They did. Okay, they made the game. <laughs> I'm not the stereotyper. They are. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Johnny Cage is like the most prototypical white guy ever. He's a movie star. Of course, he's a movie star. Right. <laughs> yeah, because nobody black has ever been starred in a movie. Have you ever heard of Samuel L. Jackson? Have you Who? ever seen any movie ever? He's a black guy. <laughs> any movie ever? <laughs> He's a token one. <laughs> He's in all of them? Him, him or Morgan Freeman? Yes. They're in oh. all of them? Watching that play again. That's why we do PFPs, too. Yeah. It's just a weird play because the shift PFPs. is on and pitcher's fielding practice. Oh, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Uh, it's just a, it's just a bad feed from the pitcher, really, and he needs to throw the baseball overhand in that spot. That one needs to go overhand because it has to beat the runner. Yeah, but it the, has but to beat the runner. Wh- why is the first baseman coming down on that ball? It was not sharply hit. It was. I mean, it was a. To squiver. me, that's that's the pitcher's ball all the way. Because you know, at that point, if you're not charging, like, and I'm going to use this for as an example, if you're not charging like Rizzo, you're not going to get the runner out of third. So why does it matter? You're not expecting him to bunt it, even at that case, it was a swinging bunt. Is what it was. The pitcher should be fielding that ball, or the catcher, one or the other. But the catcher has to stay home because the runner that's on second. Yeah, I mean it's. But the third baseman can't field it. It's third so, baseman, it has to be the pitcher's ball. Yeah, and you're the pitcher, putting, and and you, if you as a first baseman, if you put your, I feel like in that spot, I feel like in that spot, the first baseman's got the the first base side, and the pitcher, the pitcher has the third has base the third side. Base side. On a ball hit like that, just because third okay. base, third baseman can't go anywhere. Yeah, you're right. As a runner at second, you're right. So, and then here comes over manager. <laughs> oh man, he has <laughs> over managed his way out of this series at every turn. Alex Cora, Dave Roberts. I know Alex Cora oh. though has not missed a beat, not one, yeah, not Alex, one mistake. He, I mean, he's pushing a lot of buttons, but his team has only scored two runs tonight. So let's not, you know. <laughs> Let's not make him. I'm not. I'm not. But I'm just saying. To the point Alex that... scores. Alex scores made a lot of better decisions than Dave Roberts is just trying to make every decision. Sometimes the only, the, the best decision is no decision at all, or and, the decision to not do something. And a lot I of guess. it. A lot of it comes down to analytics. And I said this earlier. This is my. That was kind of my point. Is that he's the type of person that's taking information from the front uh, from the front office saying this is our data on these situations and he's putting into play every single one of those situations he's not going really with his gut no and that's why i was saying and that's why i'm saying in a way that he pulled his pitcher too soon because his pitcher was doing and i know that that the third time through the lineup the 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 batting average or the Goes up by what a hundred points, I think, compared to this compared to the first, and, yeah, se- and seventy points I've, by the compared to the second, I believe. We're kind of starting to dip our toes back in the the big ball or small ball topic. As far as I, I relate, big ball more to like analytics. It's analytics driven, so that that's where it all came from. Um, yeah. But to me, like you know, like they like the like the other day when he pulled Baez after he was dealing, you know, cuz yeah. oh I like the matchup and blah, blah. it's like dude, you just use your eyes. Don't use the paper. Use well, your eyes. Like, you know, the, uh, and I'm talking the, the analytics mm-hmm. paper. Yeah. The cheat sheet that if you will, you know, that's they have these sheets that tell them in this situation we want to go with this pitcher and this and then like they play in all this pre-game. But then in the game, you're not seeing you're not using your the eye test at all and it's just to me that's just ludicrous. I mean, I get it. I I'm you know, but so so with that, what's the point of having a manager if it's just going to be right? Yeah, these right, numbers exactly. Make sense. These I numbers mean, make sense. So do bias this, is do dealing. This. You let him continue to deal there. When it, when it come when it comes to the analytics of baseball and and the shift that it took from from basically managing by the seat of your pants, like Sparky Anderson, mm-hmm. to what it is now, 
all happened because of when I when I think of of that switch, it happened in Boston more than anywhere else. And it was Well, it happened in Oakland first. N- not as much. I mean, yeah, it that's where that I that's kind of where I got started with Paul DePodesta. Yeah. But when you really think of of, of it being come in vogue mainstream, it's because Boston did it with Theo Epstein and it was all part of the same kind of mm-hmm. kind of group. It was Theo, Jed, Jason McLeod, um, Andrew Friedman, who's now with the Dodgers, mm-hmm. as the Dodgers president of baseball ops, I believe, yep. um, and Josh Burns, who I believe, last I heard, was in San Diego. But I'm not sure if he's still there. But Well, did, well was it McLeod in San Diego? So was Jed. And Jed was too. They were there for a little bit until Theo came to the Theo Cubs. Theo traded Andrew Kashner for Jed Hoyer. Literally. I, I know. <laughs> That's why I'm chuckling. <laughs> Have you ever heard of a, a general manager making a assistant GM deal? <laughs> the Cubs the Cubs traded Chris Carpenter to Boston for Jed Hoyer, for uh, Theo Epstein. Okay. It wasn't I me. Mean, it was Chris Carpenter, the pitcher, but it wasn't the St. Louis Cardinals. That would be awesome if you could trade guys from other teams, right? Uh, you're gonna go there. Uh, Adam, <laughs> Adam Wainwright for Jed Hoyer, and Jed's gonna come over here. That'd be fun. But, <laughs> but no, it was just it was that whole school of guys right there, and they all came in about the same time. Mm-hmm. I, I think they were all pretty close friends, as far as I know. Well, the three with the Cubs are for sure. Yeah, I think Josh Burns worked with with Theo before. Okay. And I believe Andrew Friedman did as well. But Andrew Friedman did a lot of his original work in uh, Tampa Bay with Joe Madden. Right. So that's just that's just a connection to the game that's currently going on. If you guys are watching so, it, yeah, if you uh, watched it, you're not you know, going so watch, yeah, to be watching it right now. But, but that's where the analytics, um, and that's what you're talking about, you know, your school of thought. Continue with that because I wanted to see where you were going. I know you, you gave us the background on who, is the, who these people are, but – you know the school of thought it came into play with Boston. Well, it's just the whole and the, came in vogue. Yeah, the whole thought was just because I know Andrew Friedman's in 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 L.A. right now, and that connection to Boston. But um, <laughs> uh, Andrew Friedman now being in the front office with the Dodgers. Mm-hmm. With Dave Roberts being the over manager, you got Theo Epstein in Chicago. With Joe Mann being the over manager, just you know, is it is it becoming is it becoming too much? Too much over managing. So there was something very interesting that I heard. I, today. I think it's not just even the managing too. I think at times, and sorry to interrupt you. You're good. Um, at times too, it's he even, does it to you all the time. You took my you, you took my place because I was going to wait for him to actually get into his point, and then I was going to completely just. <laughs> uh, so, but it's also uh, the hitting too. Like I, I believe you know I, I the the numbers are the numbers. I mean, you can argue with them all to to your face till you turn blue in the face. You're going to be wrong. I'm I'm wrong when I'm saying this, but I believe in situational hitting. But that's because I come from a youth baseball perspective where it's a totally different game. And people need to understand that, that what you see on TV and what you see in the backyard or down the street at the ballpark are not the same brand of baseball. But my point being is that there's times where these guys are just swinging for the fences. It's like, no, like I just hit a ground ball, like get the ball in play, like lay a butt down, move, advance the runners, like do <sighs> I mean, that I, is, that uh, is, there's so much to unpack there, uh-huh. and I'm, I, I my head to. is spinning. Uh-huh. <laughs> I almost like went that, full bore and no, I don't want to. I don't know why. Why would you give up an out if you don't have to? That nearly gets us into the topic that we're going to talk about anyway. So it does. But what I wanted to say first is that analytics started looking at you know data. Just, you know, it was it's data driven, obviously. So it started looking at this data, and now I feel like. Like after the OPS and your first major analytics came into play, 
right? So OPS, war, those things. Now they're starting to dive in even more because that worked. And now they're diving in even more, yeah. which means, well, you know what? I don't care about righty lefty anymore. I care about, okay, is this this batter versus this right handed pitcher that has this kind of pitch, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Like it's like too many too many am I, uh, filters, too many variables, if you will, that you're trying to match up. And to me, there's no point in having a manager if you're just going to overanalyze it. Yeah. And then tell them what to do. Paralysis by analysis. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think. <laughs> and, and again, I'm a I'm a I'm a firm believer in analytics. And, and you know, there's there's f- specific things that truly make sense, as in as in launch angle, right? Hit the ball in the outfield. There's less people there. You have a higher chance of getting on. That means you're also hitting it harder too. Mm-hmm. We but talked about that already. We did. So I'm not so I don't need right. to get back into that. But that's my point is it's still true. Analytics are still true because it's a data driven. It's number based. Well, to 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 kind of unpack a little bit of, of what Coach Logan was talking about. Um totally forgot. Bunts. Bunting, no, no. move a runner on, small ball, big ball. Oh, you're killing me. How'd you forget? He Cause, turned because you don't stop talking. Shut up. <laughs> no. Oh no! You told me to. I'm sorry. My bad. <laughs> and I'm not no, saying would... always. I'm just saying certain times, especially like World Series time or like crunch time. You know, the certain times. There's certain spots where I just feel like that's what it was. There you, you go. You know, certain spots. I feel like they need to just hey, just get a run in. I, just I, get a scratch a run out. However, to, claw tooth and nail your way. Is that the saying? I don't think that I said that saying right, but. Scratch and claw, tooth and nail. Tooth and yeah, that's what I was trying to get your way in, or get a run in, however you can yeah. so at certain times. Yeah, and that's not wrong. Uh, the only thing that I do want to piggyback off of is the numbers are the numbers, right? Okay, if that's why I say I'm wrong when I say that. I I know I'm wrong, but at the same time, you're I, you're not though, okay? Because. If if your average is two sixty seven, that means you're a two sixty seven hitter. And if you hit two sixty seven last year, or two sixty nine last year, or two sixty five, you, your number's not going to change that much. Mm-hmm. Whatever type of hitter you are, the numbers are the what your numbers are. Mm-hmm. The, if your numbers are two sixty five, you're a two sixty five hitter. Okay, so but in a singular at bat, throw the numbers out the window. Yeah. And that's basically how you have to look at it is the numbers, your, your batting average doesn't mean jack squat right now. Nope. Milky Best right now is 0 for 5, 0 for 6 probably in game three. Okay. Eduardo Nunez is the hero right now. Because of a swinging butt. <laughs> I mean, so in a singular at bat, and that and that doesn't just mean in the World Series. That means in in May as well. Okay. I'm I'm a firm believer in the numbers are, the numbers tell you, what, the numbers. Are. I would say the numbers tell you what you've done. I, 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 think, I, think, I think it's the, a little deeper than that. But the numbers, but, are, but the numbers are 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 based mm-hmm. on your past performance. Right. Right. That's what it's based on. Well, just because you're you're hitting two thirty five doesn't mean you're not going to get hit now, but it you know, but just because you're hitting four hundred doesn't mean you are going to get hit now. Right, and that's a, that's the whole thing. It's in a singular at bat, throw the numbers out. Numbers don't matter at that point. The only thing you got to worry about is your swing. If you're where you're at with your swing, just those those things. That's what mm-hmm. got to matter. And every pitch defines or, or changes a certain characteristic in the at bat. Right. And I know we've talked about that too, but uh-huh. it's what it does. Every pitch changes the outcome of the game yeah so so no you're not wrong no but there's a lot more to it well i just feel like some of these guys have gotten this new aged approach beat into their heads so heavily that they have no they are not even like able able to you know lay down like a a line drive type of swing they're just their swing is you know driven towards a home run and that's the swing they're going to give you 
every for, time they come up to bat. For example, look at Ed, Eduardo Nunez. Eduardo Nunez laid down a beautiful bunt, and he swung full bore on that pitch. Mm-hmm. You know, so <laughs> some guys can't. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just joking, and you guys thought I was completely serious. I was like, <laughs> no, I like, I, when you said Eduardo Nunez, I was like, all right, here we go. No. <laughs> but, and that's and that's the thing is, oh, sad day, huh? <laughs> that's the thing is, there is a time and a place for it. But if you got a runner on first base and one out, it's not time to bunt. Correct. To move a runner over. There's, there's no point behind that. Because then now you're at two outs with a runner in second. Yeah, all it takes is then a hit to get a runner in. But what now we're now we're gonna jump back into the numbers and say, what is the likelihood of you hitting that runner in as the next batter? I mean, yes, more than the runner on first base, but the point is to drive the baseball. Right. Now I will disagree with you a little bit. You would. So like now oh I'm sorry. With one out. Runner at first, double play, you're out of the inning. My chances of, of scoring a run with a runner at second and two outs are higher than one out with a runner at first. And, and I said that, but how often do you see that being done? Well, it, and it depends on who's hitting. Absolutely. But if you're, not ask, you're not going to ask Rizzo to lay a bunt down. Since you said, since you, since you said we're going to dive back into the numbers, Max Muncy's up right now. And that's really, really where this whole genesis came from because – Dave Roberts outmanaged his team in game two. He overmanaged the game and ended up losing it because he sat Bellinger and Max Muncy against David Price, who for the first time in history has even thrown a strike in the World Series <laughs> or the playoffs. Okay. When we're in the playoffs or when you guys, youth baseball, are on Sundays, Sunday, win time. Um, when it's, as Coach Logan calls it, Championship Sunday, my best nine need to beat your best nine. Mm-hmm. And that's how we have to play it. Is Here's my guy. We talked about that with John Lester. Here's yeah. my best versus your best. Let's see who's better. Yep. I like my chances because I I believe that my best is better than your best. Yeah. Okay. So, and that's that's really where I started getting a little peeved with Dave Roberts because I up until this point, I thought he was a really good manager, and I'm not really sure right now. I mean, there's only there's only, there's only there's so few Terry Franconas in the world. Uh, and Terry Francona says that it's easy, easiest yeah. job ever. You know, he, but for for someone as good as he is, he's the best manager be. in baseball. Oh he's, yeah, without a doubt. But he's his dad. You know, and, his dad was a big league manager. Yeah, and you know, and even some would say that. Uh, that that Joe Madden did a phenomenal job this year with all the things he was having to deal with, um, injuries and all that stuff. So you can't really argue with what he's done, but I still think he overmanages. I think he plays the numbers too much. Joe rather than going by the, by the you know by your stomach, your gut. Joe overmanages way too much because of the numbers, and it's one hundred percent because of the numbers. Yeah. and that's why some of his decisions are ridiculous. Yeah. Absolutely. Like I'm not going to get into no, it. No, 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 into no, no, it. no, 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 no. But um so this is I mean this is kind of what we want to talk about with the small ball versus the big ball, you know. Right. Thoughts on it. You know, small ball we're talking runner gets on first base, you throw a bunt down to get him to second and now you now it's your job to get him in. The old school, the next hitter. The old school line of thought. Yeah. Get him on, get him over, get him in. Yep. What you saw prior to what? Oh five. Prior to Boston winning the World Series with Theo. Uh, the yeah. Royals. There's been a few outliers in there, like the Royals. The Royals played pretty, pretty much small ball. Well, the Royals had a good team. Well, yeah. if you want to talk, I mean, since you brought up oh five, Boston won it in oh four. Right. And he then, brought up 05. I did not say 05. I did not say 05. And then the next year was 05. Yeah. The Cardinals won it with David Eckstein at shortstop. Right. 2002 with with the Angels. The Angels were the 
quintessential small ball yeah. situational hitting. Those dudes hit situationally so well. And right now, that's why Boston is just walking through the postseason right now because they hit with two outs, they hit with two strikes, and they, <laughs> you know, as a as a youth coach, that's something that it's like, how do we... How do you teach that? How do we... Yeah. I don't... Because yeah, it seems like when they get two strikes on them, they just... Uh... We've, we've had kids... Uh, a couple of years ago, they'd get one strike on them and they'd be done with the in-bat. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> what are we doing? Why? So what if it was a strike that you didn't agree with? Yeah. So so you get two more. Yeah. And if you strike out, you have another bat. Yep. I mean, it's not the end of the you world. Know, and that's, and that's, that was the hardest thing trying to teach the kids is I don't care if you strike out. What I do care about is if you're up there watching yourself strike out right that was frustrating yeah. but again it's not about it's not even about striking out because it's going going to happen I, right you can't be upset about that it's going to happen we have a kid right now that is struggling in the cage mm -hmm. and he's when when he's in there getting you know the coaching and the and it, everything's slow and he's got time to think about it He's struggling real bad. And then you put him in there, and we do the quick drill where we feed the machine quickly, mm -hmm. and it develops stamina and, and quick hands and, I mean. And strength. And strength. Um, he doesn't have as much time to think about it, and he does really well during quick drill. Yeah. And that is, I believe it's a function of coaching. And the coaching that, he's get, that he got to the coaching that he's getting. Mm -hmm. I believe the coaching that he's got has been results based. Yeah. So he's now so much in his head because he's not getting the results. Oh. Uh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Ball was hit deep to left field. Um. I, 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 you know, what I mean, and I know whose coach was last year, and I it doesn't. Wouldn't surprise me at all. There's no surprises. If he was more results based, mm -hmm. and if you're results based as a coach, instead of, um, I don't even know how I want to say it. Approach based. No, it's if, if Resu results so if versus. You're, if you're correcting, like that's the thing. Is if you're correcting based on what just happened, with that at bat per se, rather than correcting on what the breakdowns of the swing actually mm -hmm. is. So yeah. results based you're looking at the outcome um I I don't know what to call it but if it's you're, almost like short term versus long term is kind of like like are you looking at the short term success or are you looking out for the long term success of the player? Yeah. Right. What, what are you the, just trying to throw a bandaid over top of the the swing and so he does good first? and you're just going to let him get away with having bad right. habits. Right. Yeah. Because he makes contact for that time when it's you can see clear as day he's not got a good swing that's going to catch up mm -hmm. okay and you know part of the genesis for this podcast was exactly that my, yeah my buddy Noah put out a ranting rambling Facebook pay, post really upset at some of the coaches where he's like coaches we have to stop ignoring problems. Mm -hmm. Because we just ignore issues, and then they become bigger issues. We ignore little problems, they turn into big problems. And the older we get, the more bad habits we have, that's what gets us beat. That's what, that's what gets us beat by a fastball. That's what gets us beat in a game. This is what gets us beat in a, a bat, well, pretty bad a basis because we're not having the proper development. Okay? Mm -hmm. And I think that's the way to look at it, is it... Are we looking at it as a developmental or are we looking at it as results? So if he's in the cage and you're seeing the development and you're seeing the swings getting better and you're seeing everything, but he's he's just underneath of it because he's got a hand issue or a timing issue or whatever it is, I think it's a little bit of both, to be it's, honest with you. It starts with timing and then it, and then the, the timing leads into... He's off schedule because his hands are moving too yep. much. Yep, yep. And then he's trying to get his step down early, and then his hands get off. As just, yeah, and then Wait, he's under he's underneath the ball, and he's just missing it, 
and then he's upset every time right. that he just misses it. Right. And it's like we're getting there. Yeah. Okay. But the minute that you don't have the results, you can't you can't be results based because your coaches aren't results based right now. Mm-hmm. Your other coaches might have been, but that's not how we're doing that's things. That's not how now. we're doing things. So it does so and that's and, and that's a philosophy when we go into the cage. We're not I, I don't care where that ball goes because guess what? It's going to hit a net, and it's not going anywhere, and it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. What I care about— There's no runners on right now. Right. What I care about is seeing your swing, seeing the separation, seeing the correct hand, the correct back, bat path, that your bottom hand's leading, you know, you're, you're leading the knob to the ball, mm-hmm. all these things. You get an extension. Your That's head, what I care about. Heads down. That's another problem I see is yep. head has a tendency to move. Yep. I think a lot of the kids that are doing it these days because they're trying to they're trying to get so much power behind their swings and mm-hmm. they think their head does it yeah. and it doesn't. It's 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 all in your hips. Your head should should not leave the ball right on the way to the bat. And then the second you make contact with the bat, it shouldn't leave the bat. Absolutely. If you will. Absolutely. Yeah, cuz you can't you can't keep your eye on the ball coming in if you're say per se looking at the pitcher but if you come on boy stick with me oh geez that was a jerk move fans didn't even help him he's in la i know eduardo nunez is taking it anyway um (laughs) (laughs) i mean yeah they didn't even help him uh, uh, That's a long run. Yeah, and I know I'm kind of backtracking a little bit, but my thought on it, to, you know, really th- these coaches that are results based, you're you're doing such a disservice to your player because you're embed. They feed off of that, and they're you're embedding that results based into their head. That's and that then was where I was what ends to. up happening is that they get defeated too quickly when they're they don't. Especially in baseball, baseball is such a different game because it's not like basketball. Especially, I, I really like basketball where you can't turn around and just go right back down the court and make up for a mistake that you just made. You have to wait to make up for your. So the way I I really coach that to my kids is don't let failure the failing at this opportunity affect your next opportunity to succeed. Yep. That's exactly how I t- tell them and. You know, that doesn't mean that they automatically understand that or, or apply it or get it, but that's the way I like to phrase it to them for them to really understand that. Every pitch is a new opportunity. That's Every- going to that's gonna go back to click factor, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. All the way back to there. We yep. talked about that in episode one. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really, really important that the kids understand that, that um, whether you, even if you're, even in Championship Sunday, Two outs, you're down by one, you got a runner on third base, and you swing and miss on strike three. Okay, so don't let, you know. Don't take it to the field. Go right. get in the dugout. In all honesty, like, that's like. It happens. It, from personally, my perspective, when I do something like that, if I would say struck out, strike, wow, strike out or, you know, easy out or whatever it is, that's. That's something that I, you know, will have to go into the dugout and and talk myself out of being upset, if you will. Mm-hmm. Talk myself out of the, the negativity, almost like I have to gather myself again. Mm-hmm. But, you know, and if, and if a kid has to do that, instead of rushing him back onto the field, give him a second. Yeah. Give him a second to gather it. And as a teammate, when you see someone do that, oh, man, you better be, you better be picking that player up one way or the other. Yep. One way or the other. Yeah, that's huge. That's really huge. Listen, man, don't worry about it. We'll get it next time. Like, that's, you know, we talked about that too. But, yeah. you know, I, I feel like we keep bringing up the same instances, same well, things. They're but important. They are and important. They, it, it, it all leads back. We're not trying to lead it back. It's no, leading back it on does. its own. It does. If you can't tell, we are very, very into, oh, what are oh, you doing? Wow. What are you doing, guy? Wow. Wow. This is an awesome game. Sorry, just folks. hold the ball. Wow. See, that's a that's an example right there 
another one. And that's why I'm loving that we're watching this game right now because there was a ball hit to second base right back up the middle. Runner at second. The second baseman fields it and then gets off balance, makes a great play, then gets off balance and then tries to shovel the ball over to first. Terrible throw. And that's Ian Kinsler. Oh, he slipped right there and then tried to come back. Ian Kinsler is a is a veteran second baseman. That can't happen right there. No. That cannot happen right, right there. Well, it's not like this is the first game he's ever played in the World Series some either. Fat cleats he's wearing though. I mean, that is just that that play <laughs> right there cannot happen. No. Especially with the runner at second. That ties the game. What coach is talking about is there if if you're Fielding that ball, and you're not a hundred million percent confident that that throw is going to result in an out. You have got to have the baseball know how to hold that throw, and not you're better off letting that runner get to first base and on to your next. There's two outs. Right, there's two outs. The next batter is so likely to ground out, pop out, strike out, foul out. Whatever you got to force out at second base. Still, exactly. You've got so many opportunities. That, yeah. That you're right. That absolutely cannot happen. But um, but you see, but I don't. What's David Roberts out there for? Is he trying um, to overmanage something again? Yeah, trying to. Okay. I don't. I don't disagree with the throw. The result. The result. Ha ha ha! No, you no, guys. No, no, I, no, no, no. Hold I on. absolutely disagree. Look at that play. I absolutely disagree no, with that. No, throw. no, no, no. His foot slips. There's a runner at second. He's going to third. Okay, Hold okay. the base. I didn't see that his There's foot slipped. I missed it. I didn't see that his foot slipped. What I'm getting at, though, is as a professional ball player, mind you, and you and, and your foot, and you field the ball up the middle. I think he's saying that it went out of play. And, and you field the ball up the middle. You anticipate wanting to make a throw. You, in your head, know that you need to make a throw because mm. if you field the ball cleanly you can get it out and you can get the runner out he would if slips right there and then he couldn't get anything on the throw and he just but what are you saying what are you saying if he if he puts that ball on the, on online to first base puig still safe no no yeah no if he if he makes a good throw if there, he makes puig a good throw out. puig is out by a step at least yeah Just, just goes to show. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. At least I, I think he even had time really there to like set his feet and even make a throw and still get Puig. Well, I'm not sure he had time to set his feet. Maybe not he, fully, but he had time he had to get time better footing than that. To yeah, to get better footing, even jump throw it still, but just gather your feet. Just gather for a, a second. little bit more instead of throwing all the way across your body. He threw all the way across his body, and, and he I mean, threw the ball ten feet wide. There's just no way you're gonna make that play. Right at that point, like. But but you're not uh, understand when to put the ball in your pocket. Yes. Understand when to eat it. Un- that's that's why knowing your situations, knowing your runners. But again, it's if if he puts the ball. That's a veteran second baseman. He expects to make that play. Exactly. That's my point. He expects to make that play. He doesn't know that he's going to hold on to the ball too long when he when he's when he's throwing sidearm to flip it over to second base. Okay. He anticipates that I'm going to. You know what? This is an easy throw. I'm going to be able to get it over to first base without a problem. That's my point. Is he expects to make that play? I don't care because he slipped and he had, he did have time to maybe gather himself again, take another step to be able to gather yourself so you're not throwing off your back foot. Maybe you're throwing off your front foot and your your body is more square. Going to his left, maybe, but going to his right, you got it. You that's a veteran second baseman. He's, he expects to make the play. He's also got to know when to when to put the ball in his pocket. Right. Especially in the bottom of the 13th inning with a one-run lead in Game 3 of the World Series. But he has to – but at the same time, he's still wanting – Live to fight another day. And again, I ask the question, are we looking at this results-based? Are we looking at this in a situation where, again, as you say it yourself – he is expecting to make the play. Yes, he has to know. He has six. He he has six. What? He has six steps. Sorry. To let to, to get the runner out. What other What other way is there of looking at this other than the results of it? Because 
Well, you're talking, I mean, we can drop it all the way back to click factor. Understanding when you got to pocket it. He's not expecting that he has to pocket that at all. That thought does not cross his mind. And I can tell you that, that it doesn't. It doesn't cross his mind to pocket it because that's a that's a play he would normally most of the time. Yeah, like any ninety ninety nine percent of the time, I'm probably saying in any he al- makes that play. Right. Well, not only that, in almost any other situation, that's a like you know if this is third inning, he's making that play all day. So but is this is a situ- just, is a situation too big for him? Is that what you're saying? That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm what I'm saying is he just made a bad throw. Well, I see. I'm not willing to to give him that he made a bad throw because that's and there you go. That's, Next plays an out. So that's way more than just again, a bad throw. You got it. if he pockets it was that way more than a bad throw. Over. It was more than a bad throw. But again, you can't say that because you don't know that. True. True. <laughs> Very true. But uh, that's a, it's a wild game. Yeah, this is a fun game to watch, but. Again, it's it's this know, is this is paralysis by analysis as well. What we're doing, what we're doing with that single play right there. I'm yeah. just saying, when just there's like, there's a point in time where as a fielder you have to know when you can make that play and when you can't. And yeah. I agree with you completely. But from past experiences with Ian Kensler himself, he can make that play. Yeah, but he used to be able to tag from third and score on a fly ball to center as well. <laughs> <laughs> not get thrown out by 30 feet not disagreeing <laughs> it's always crazy when but I, but, I, but i'm still saying cliff like that you know i'm still saying five you know, times undefeated bro yeah, undefeated it's true i'm still saying there is the expectation of for yourself that that play is still is still a high low risk high reward play for him there is a very, there's a very low risk, and <laughs> not in if, that player wasn't. If you give him ten more baseballs, and the same things happen, and then the same instances happen where his foot slips, but he is able, he, the other nine, he makes, he makes a good throw. He makes a throw that's at least on line to get the runner. I, w- I would put money on that one. Okay, and that's what I'm saying. That's that's all I'm saying is that. Nine times out of ten, he's making that play. But you can't say that either because you don't know. You're right. But what's? It, but, but if you're gonna if you're gonna make that if you're gonna make a straw man argument before you have to apply it to you, the next one too. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. But I that one that one so. Let's take this back to coaching. Yeah. Four in the dugout. That happens. Yeah, we're going to say pocket it. Every single time. If your foot slips like that, you're going to say pocket it. But they're not major league ball players. No, 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 no. If you're in the dugout and that happens, where do we go? Now the ball game's tied. We're in extras. We had a chance to win it. Let's go have some fun, boys. Play some play some extra okay. baseball, right? I mean, it, that is not a time. The game happens. You don't. You don't come unglued on the kid. That is not a time to say anything other than. This is baseball, kid. Mm-hmm. Bigger head up. Let's go. Yeah. Yep. Now you got to go. Now you got to go hit. Now you got to go hit. Let's get right. that, you, you're that, almost better off not even. I mean, at that moment, that's not. Now again, his head's already down. Right. Oh yeah. This if, base. This game will kick that right out of you. If this. Is the, sorry, go ahead. If, no, the, if that's the third inning, like I talked about earlier, then maybe after the fact you pull him aside and just say, "Hey, just so you know, you know, probably you probably should have held that there. It's a, my, that's a teaching time, possibly. But in the thirteenth inning, and you the game just got taken, you know, the the wind just got taken away from you. Well, not necessarily, but it mm-hmm. could be taken. That's not the time. That's right. not a teaching moment. That's not the time to tell them that hey, maybe you probably should have held that ball there. That's the time exactly. That's the time to say hey, go out. Let's let's go. Let's go back out there and make up for that with right. the bats, you know, or whatever. It's all good. We got this, you know. A- after the ball game, maybe. Maybe if the kid's ready for it. If the kid's I ready say, for it, I would say depending on win or lose. Yeah. If you lose, wait till the kid brings it up. Wait till he asks. Uh, no, about if you it. lose, if you lose, you make it a coaching point to the whole team. 
Yeah, yeah. If you're the coach, you, I, yes. I, I, I mean, uh, I guess I was looking right at, after the game. No, 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 no. I ran after the game. Okay. No, 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 not right <laughs> after the game at all. No, 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 no. Next, the next, next practice. practice. Or, yeah, or, yeah, I agree with that. Or when there's a, a and like when you I, have a chance to have a situational kind of. Yeah. I was coming at it from the dad's perspective. It's it's, like, it's a little bit. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to have that without calling the kid out, and we're not trying to call the kid out. That's true. And that's where I'm saying if there's a chance to break into it situationally, yeah, you know where I wouldn't even say maybe work on it, just maybe I don't know. Yeah, it's it's a tough, tough situation. Yeah. T- tough, tough, yeah. tough place. You better hope you, you now. Gotta... Now, if the kid, if the kid's mm-hmm. resilient and understanding that you're not calling them out, mm-hmm. then you know that's one thing. At that point, you just you just kind of rally the troops and you say, "All right, guys, let's go get it." We know we can score. Yeah. Nice. Now he's trying to yeah. Take one out. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. We know we can, we do know that. We can score, so let's not, let's you know, go get let's a not run. worry about that. Let's go get a run and do it again. Yeah. That's baseball. So that and that's and that's another that's another key thing here is when we're watching this stuff and, and you know, you, you saw us get off on that. And then we bring it back to what we would do in the dugout. That situation changes completely on its head. Yeah. You know, if I'm in the dugout as the coach and that happens, I got to keep everybody together. That's mm-hmm. that's our main job as that's, coaches is keeping, keeping the thing together. Mm-hmm. That's something that for me and I, you guys are, I admire you guys because you guys have, from what I've seen of you guys, when I have watched you guys coach you guys, especially you, Lance, I, I'll give you especially, I mean, not that you're bad at it by any means, but I, I think you guys both have excellent composure. Um, from what I've seen of you guys coaching and when it comes to tough situations, I struggle with that big time. I'll be very honest. And I'm sure I'm not the only one out there coaches. No, no I've, I, I've seen that firsthand. I get not. emotionally invested in, into these games. And when something bad happens, I'm a fan too. Okay. And, right. And, and so it's hard for but, me but as to, a, when they but as make a, coach, a mistake, you, you can't do sorry. that. You're, you're right. right. As a coach, you're not a fan. You can't be, but I am, and it's hard to separate that. That's where my it, biggest flaw in thing. my coaching game is. It's the hardest thing, and that's and that's where that's where I, that's what I've had to do myself. I've had to get on. I don't want to say get on him, but I've had to say something to him as, "Hey," and he's had to do the same thing to me. Where I come in the dugout, and I'm I'm steaming, and he'll kind of grab me by the ear and be like, "Listen, bro, we need you here." <laughs> yeah. Right. So you know, he does that's, the same th- same thing same thing when we play. If we play softball or whatever, it's the same thing in the dugout. If I'm kind of in a little frazzle, frazzle, you know, he's like, ah, you know, he'll talk me and, and I'll do the same thing with him. I'll look at him and I'll just, all I'll do is I'll just, you know, kind of push my hands down a little bit and he'll look at me and be like, and then he's fine. And then we're good. You the know? only the only time where he's really, this last year, that he's ever had to say anything to me <laughs> This is when I was really being a dick to the third base coach <laughs> <laughs> because he was being a dick to me. And then I tried to, I started egging him on without saying anything to him. And it almost turned into a fight. And that's the only re he's the only reason I've never been beat up at a bar. Or like <laughs> he knows when it's time to, okay, <laughs> let's pretty, go. Pull his reins back a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and, and I'm okay with uh, Here's here's the situation. I'm sitting on the bucket calling pitches, and my pitcher throws a pitch. That's a pretty pretty good pitch, and it doesn't he doesn't get the call. And just to get his head back into it, I look at him and I go, "Hey, if they're up there looking for walks, sometimes that's going to happen. Let's go get the next one." Mm-hmm. Yep. The third base coach escalated the situation. Oh, oh so he it's was not my fault. He was hot. He goes, "Swing at the next pitch. Why don't I got to listen to this crap anymore?" But he didn't say crap. And uh, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> really? And he knew that I was I was about at seven. Coach Lance knew that. At that point, it was like seven, <laughs> pushing an eight. <laughs> Keep an eye on this situation. I was. He knew that I wasn't going to stop until the guy hit me because I was. I didn't say anything to him, and I was just going to keep talking to to Ave and. He was he was gonna come at me and I knew it <laughs> and he and Le- Coach Lance knew that that I would I'm I'm a I'm a jackass sometimes and then then my competitive juices start going and talk about going from a seven to like a a thirteen <laughs> yeah when the yeah when that adrenaline hey, kicks in a little bit stop it well, right now 
I, mean, I talk to you like I talk to like I talk to my own son. <laughs> I'm like, this is not my fault right now. This is not. It's not my fault that where we're at, where we're at. And I told you, I knew. Like mm-hmm. I knew. I I I can't control that that if, guy. If I ever see that guy in public again, he's a scared coward a hole. If I've ever seen him in public, I will fight him. So you want to know? You want to know the real story? <laughs> no. He coaches my boss's son's team. Yeah, I knew that. And I see him every week when he comes in to work to pick up. He works at Aramark to pick up uh, our towels and stuff. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> every week. <laughs> Before then, I had talked to them, talked to him a few times. After then, haven't said a word since. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I like, <laughs> not purposefully, because he, again, he, my, not my boss's son, I'm sorry, my boss's grandchild. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, he will, <laughs> he'll, t- he'll be talking to him. You know, so I'm not going to walk up and interrupt or anything like that. Whereas before, you know, sometimes I'd run into it just him or, you know, I'd be in the office and, and my boss wouldn't be or whatever. So, you know, you just start talking whatever. But yeah, ever since then, haven't, haven't said a word. <laughs> But uh, getting back, I mean, uh, dude, I really like. So yeah, your the composure thing is a coach. Yeah, it's I, I, want, I want to get back into so that. It's hard so hard because it's extremely hard to do. I've had to coach myself on how to do it. Yeah, uh-huh. mm-hmm. and it's because the first year that I started coaching, I was far too intense for the kids, and this was little league. Mm-hmm. mind you yeah. and i was far That's too hard. intense and and there was at one point half about halfway through the season my dad looked at me and he goes you having fun i was like yeah and he goes really because you don't act like it why really he goes yeah you're way too intense he's like you're like football like playing football intense kind of thing oh okay you know, so that was me then realizing that I needed to. So take it's a step it's out. hard to look in the mirror, but I, I'm I'm always willing to look in the mirror. I always w- have been that type of person, but I, I the problem is I don't look in the mirror until after the fact. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah. like dude, I've been a, a guilty of you know my kids something bad happens to them. You know, we we got a a bad call or uh, we didn't make a play we should have made and or whatever it is. And I've actually like taken my hat off and like slapped it against my knee and like shown my emotions. And like that doesn't sound like much, but if you're a oh, nine, that's a ton. If you're mm-hmm. a nine year old and you see that, you see my coach just lost his control. Mm-hmm. What are you going to be inclined to do as a nine year old? You're going to think that well, when something bad happens, I should probably get mad and slap mine. Mm-hmm. You know, they're impressionable young kids and they don't know how to handle the sport. And I did, I regret that. Like I, I think about, but it's so hard in the heat of the moment when something, a game changing event just happens. And it didn't go your way, man. It's especially, it's really frustrating when it's like something that we've worked on. It's like, dude, we, yeah. come on. Yeah. But, How, oh, yeah. However, if you can write the ship, there's going to be another game changing situation that will come your way. Yes. Yeah. Um, he, and that's, here's the biggest thing for me, though, yeah. honestly. I would listen to music and get pumped up before the game, just like I was playing. Yeah. You know what I do now? I listen to stand up on the way. Mm hmm. And it just puts me in a much better mood, better, better, better head headspace. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and um, like that Aaron Rodgers commercial where he's listening to like the really chilled out music. Shit up! I, I, I ain't done wrong with your knee. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I love it. I hate Aaron, but that is a good commercial. Great commercial. Uh, it ain't what you said. It ain't not what you said. <laughs> I mean. I don't. I actually, I don't listen to music before the game, at all. I listen to nothing before the game, because I'm. That's even worse for me. It's for me. Sometimes it is because then I start thinking too much. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times when I'm driving to the game, it's um, thinking about the little tiny details of a couple of of potential situations that could arise during the game, and that's you know that's where I. Plus, I'm in the car with Kellen. Most of the time. So it's almost like, well, you know, maybe I'll talk to him. We'll talk. We'll talk a little bit or we'll, I don't, I don't know. You know, just, 
I don't have a routine, I guess, mm-hmm. and I'm okay with that. But the biggest thing that you uh, that you that we we have worked on specifically together, even for that matter, um, that will shed a little bit of light onto you, is what just happened truly doesn't matter. Right. There's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing you can do about it. Mm-hmm. So, and I've always I've had this philosophy for a long time. I can't change it. Why be upset about it? Mm-hmm. Like, there's one day. My wife backed my new truck into a light pole fixture, but the truck set up high enough that she didn't hit the the block on the bottom. She hit the screws that were sticking out of the top. Ooh. Right? The big old big old bolts. She backed into that just barely, but enough that it left a small dent on, on the new truck. And and she was so afraid to call me up. She thought I was going to be so angry at her and everything. My, my dad was actually over at the time. And she called up and she goes, I'm sorry. And I go, or she called me up and she didn't even say words. I said, you didn't back my truck into something, did you? Yeah. Because I just, I just knew she wasn't used to driving it. And she goes, how would you know? I was like, it's all good. Don't worry about it. Like I'm, I wasn't upset at all because there's no point. She already mm-hmm. feels bad enough. And... I can't change right, it. What, what are you gonna do about it? Yeah. What what what'd you hit? Did you hit somebody or did you hit something? <laughs> Were you being stupid or no? I mean, and and you can't you could. She, there's no way she could have seen it. Right. You know, it's a light pole. It's yeah, because they're not big. <laughs> what I'm saying, but but where she hit it, you can't you can't see it in the mirror. <laughs> you jerk. But yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I, I, it's something. I, it's a point of emphasis for me this year. I've gotten progressively better. Uh, and the only thing I'll do is help your kids not worry yeah. about it. Mm-hmm. You got to set the tone, forward. coaches. You really do. And whether you think you do or you don't, you do. Mm-hmm. You set the tone. They're gonna follow your lead, and you see that all the way up to the pros. Uh, I see it especially like. I, I'm sorry to cross cross genres here, but especially in football. Like these teams inherit the personality of their coaches, you know yeah. they really do. They they and oh, that, look, he made that play. If, the, <laughs> if that happens in the pros, you better believe it happens like ten times as much in in youth sports, you know. You know, and that's you, that, give, you give him nine more, he's gonna drop one. <laughs> he might. <laughs> Wouldn't put it past him. And that's um, it's something that I look back on our last three years, uh-huh. our first our first year. I may have come in a little too intense. Actually, yeah. I did come in a little too intense. About I did too. Almost, almost wanting perfection. Um, but and I and I slowly backed off of that. But I didn't. But but when you started off that way, you have to almost set a mm-hmm. precedent. Like we start off the first practice throwing the ball around a circle and trying to get each other's names known and all that stuff and. If they made made a bad throw or they didn't catch it with two hands or whatever, it was five push ups. And then literally, I had half the parents look at me and say, "Oh, this this house gonna be sweet. I'm out of here. You got this under control." <laughs> and I was like, "Well, now I gotta hold that standard." And that wasn't the standard that I was trying to set. I was just trying to make an emphasis of these these three things are very important: know your teammates, catch the ball with two hands, make good throws. That simple. And, and and yeah, you know, I mean, um, it's for me the biggest. The big, and now I've talked about not having, not know if I had the patience for it or not, and it goes back to I, I'd never been in the dugout before, mm-hmm. and being able to separate being in the dugout from being on the field was the hardest hurdle that I had to. That I had that I had to leap because I'm here. Like, I'm on the field, but I'm there's not. There's nothing I can do about this. Right. I have no control over what's going on. Right. And it really got to me. Yes. And then when I was able to kind of divorce myself from that and understand, you know, some this might have happened, but something else is going to happen later. You know, we've we've been here before. We're going to be here again. Okay, so next weekend we have a tournament. So, <laughs> I mean, it's not the end of the world, right? You know, and oh, I'm I'm out here in fall games, dude, getting 
overly Dude, hyped out. You should. Uh, you, Dude, when you, I was when I was coaching with him and, and on the fall games, I was like extra chill. Yeah, like, just trying to be like, listen, bro. <laughs> Yeah, dude, I'm so intense out there, and I, I, so I've got to work on it. I, under, understand that that fall games don't matter at all. <laughs> Zero, even, even less than a practice. I mean, <laughs> yes, <laughs> and same thing with league games. Like that's league games is when you have fun, you don't care. Those were the funnest for me. Where I just, you just, you just walk care. up and it, it, I don't care if we're winning or losing. I want to know. I want to see something from a kid. Is what I want to see. You know, and when we. W- as a team, we would play better when we're more loose. The mm-hmm. kids will play better when they're more yep. loose. If they're afraid to make a mistake, they're going to make mistakes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's just going to compound. Well, and, and kind of, you know, going against that, um, Coach Lance's uh, middle son had a uh, uh, Chris, uh, had not one <laughs> in the middle of the summer, wasn't a Christmas fashion, but it was some sort of a, <laughs> of a recital or something for school. And he was, right, he missed right, the game. Right. And at the same time, another, another one of our coaches was not going to be there at the game. And it was a. It was, it was a, Evan's first recital. It was my middle yeah. son's first recital, first thing that he's ever done, kind of thing. So I was like, "I'm going." Yeah. Deal with it. Well, and it wasn't even an important game. It was a. It was like a scrimmage league game almost, and so I was coaching third, and there was like, "Why aren't we stealing?" Type of mentality, and I'm like, first of all, I don't know the size." <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing, but <laughs> no, nah. He knew the signs. I'm, well, he knew I'm, the steel side. I'm sitting here and I'm like, okay, there is absolutely no way that this team even deserves to be on the field with my kids. Right? Why am I gonna run them into the ground? Right? They're, let's try to win this game, station to station. Yeah. You know, play a little bit of small ball. Not even that. Just not stealing you get what i'm saying i know that you can steal a base and i know you can steal a base off of this pitcher and there's nothing that he can do about it and there's nothing the catcher can do about it that's not there's i don't want to say there's no honor in that way but there's we're not getting anything out of it right you know we're right. not getting anything right so let's let's hit our way to a victory instead of run our way to a victory. Right. That's, what that was, my, that's what my goal was. And and I always caught a lot of grief during league games, and I felt bad for the parents because the parents want to see their see the kids score runs, which is all great. It, it's it's phenomenal that they're that invested. But at the same time, like during league games, most of the time I'm talking to the kid that's on third base saying, hey, let him hit you in. Mm-hmm. I don't care if it's basketball or not. Let him hit you in. Now that if we need the runs, if we're behind, yeah, we'll 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 chase it a little bit, if you well, will. But work on a good, work on a good secondary. Work yeah. on a good good secondary. This is the time to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Time to work on stuff. Yeah, that's what they're for. And if you're out there against a coach that's trying to win the game, <laughs> it means way more to him. <laughs> I don't mean to say this, but let him have it. I mean, well, not just let him have it, but but. It almost pisses the coach off even more, which is kind of fun. Yeah. You know, that you don't care that much and yeah. that your kids are outperforming their kids <laughs> when he cares so much. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and none of that comes just down to natural talent, you mm-hmm. know, what, and obviously what you have taught the kids. But um, that's what that's what I got well, joy out of on, on league games when I'm just kind of sitting back like, yeah, whatever. Sure, if you want to steal, steal. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> you in, know? In, in, in a league game, if you got a guy in a league game that's out there trying to to win the league game, like trying to win the league game, that probably means he's results based, right? In everything else he does, right? And parents, something I just thought of. Keep in mind, coaches. Likewise, the league games that we're talking about, they're literally just um, glorified scrimmages. There's no champion league championship game. They're literally you just play in a you just are, are put in they're, this. They're scheduled scrimmages. Yes. That's all that it really truly is. With, mm-hmm. I mean, you get with umpires, but yeah, schedule scrimmages that the win or loss means zero. The purpose no. of them is to see things in your team yeah. and give kids different opportunities to play, different give spots. Give more kids, more and kids. Give all, some of the kids that don't get yep. tournament, play in tournaments uh, more opportunities to, to see the field. So, exactly. But... Um, we would always flip our batting order too. Sometimes, sometimes I just completely dishevel it all over the place. Just, just move it all around. 
Although I did like to keep a few of the kids together. Like I'd almost bat them in clusters. Like my three four hitter. I like I like to keep them together a little bit just because of the relationship that they built with mm-hmm. you know with each other. So whether it was whether it was the three four batting or the four three batting, whichever, it didn't really matter. But uh <laughs> I tried That was funny. I'm sorry. Not, I, I, I just love watching former Cardinals just fall flat on their face in the World Series. It gives me endless joy. I hate David Freeze. <laughs> well, that was a Freeze, though, wasn't it? That was David yeah. Freeze. Oh, he, yeah. he dove for a ball with his gl- the opening of his glove facing the ground. <laughs> you know, the Cardinal way. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, anyway, you know, so I like doing different things on those games because – it does. Then it develops more of a free. This episode became completely way off target. And off topic. I think we got. We, think but we hit all the bases, yeah. though. Not really. Probably we touched on them all at least. I don't know that we maybe. Uh, we didn't get into too much of the. We didn't get into too much of anything really. We talked a lot about, but we, we there's. I mean, I'm not upset by what we talked about. I'm just saying. <laughs> You're right. I'm looking down here. I'm like, well, we got one thing done. Oh, uh, I mean, we touched on but it we, all, but but we never really kind of. We didn't dig deep into like, the point. Yeah. Some if of those you will. things, but um, you have something circled there, Coach. We have a few minutes left, so yeah. I, I, well, we just very briefly talked on, touched on the glove on the glove yeah. conversation. I wanted to get in deeper than that because uh, we basically talked about just forty four. We just made a big advertisement for forty four gloves. They should be happy. Uh, I hope they are. Um, Send us free stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Please, but no, we we all customers customer service at forty four is above and beyond the call. Mm-hmm. And I I will the go to only- I will buy gloves from them. Every glove I buy will be from them because their customer support is so great. Uh, I had a parent. She uh, she asked us, "Hey, what I need to get? I need to get him a new glove. What should I do?" And we both the first the first sentence out of our mouth, we both 44. said forty four. And she got on the glove builder and could not figure it out. And she came. She came to me a couple. I, I don't. She could figure it out. She, she could have. To do it. I don't think she. She wanted. She didn't want to put the. Effort <laughs> she wanted in. to take the time in. So she goes, "Go design him a glove." <laughs> yeah. She's like, and she she wasn't really concerned about the money. I, I told her to do this, and you get a discount. It's about this time of year, so you do this, you'll get a discount, whatever. And um, she didn't get it done by the time the discount code was over. And I I emailed them and I said, hey. I had a parent that wanted to do this. She couldn't really figure out the glove builder. She asked me if I would do it for her. I bought five gloves from you already. Would you mind if, um, could could I, could, would you still honor the, the discount code price? And they did. Yeah. And they sent me a coupon code for the discounted price. And from then on, I'm, I was, I'm team 44 all the way. Yep. If I wasn't before, I'm 100% now. Every, glo- every glove agree. I've had before that has been a Rawlings. Every glove I'll have from now on will be a forty-four. The only thing I will say about them, and this is not like me. Don't give me. Don't don't misconstrue this as me. Like, what putting, you say? Don't you say anything bad about forty-four? No, I'm not. That's don't make them come across that table. Don't, mis- don't misconstrue this you, you, as me you, saying th- that. You know, what? you you just you just go buy your Mizuno gloves. And, and no. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> I just want people to be aware. If you do buy one, this is one thing I will tell you. Make sure it says it right on the website. Read it, and it's. I'll tell you, it's true. They tell you the only thing. Don't break, use glove oil. Yeah, don't. Do not go. Do not. Go not away. even theirs. No. I well, don't use any. they they uh, they sell their own brand. If you really want to use some, go ahead. And there is honestly, if your gloves getting dried out, you need to put a little bit of oil. I mean, that's how you keep them lasting a long time. But. My point is, don't make sure you listen to what they say, which is use their brand because it is made specifically to not harm the dyes on that they use for their gloves. And I will tell you, I tried a, a little sample of Rawlings product glove oil on uh, my son's glove to try and help get it broken and immediately regretted it. It didn't ruin it, but if I would have pursued it, it probably would have. So, uh, like if I would keep putting it on there and. Yeah, it was it was definitely changing the color a little bit. So well done. Just yeah. keep that in mind if you're gonna buy a 44. Go ahead and spend the extra eight bucks and order a, a little uh, tub of their 
glove rub is what they call it. They don't call it an oil. They call it a rub. Mm -hmm. So That's a conditioner. That's good. Nakona, yeah. Nakona sells something very similar. Um, I like the Nakona glove oil or the glove conditioner. I'm sorry. Like I just, like I just corrected. Um, sorry, I'm watching this play. But yeah. uh, my, my well I'll talk about yeah. that real quick, though. I mean, if you want to know what I'm talk, what we're talking about with these these nice gloves, go to. I mean, any of your local sports stores like a Dicks or um, you know uh, a Shields or whatever you got. Let's locally. call. <laughs> Go pick up uh, one of these Rawlings Pro Preferred Gloves. Um, or the Heart of the Hides. Yeah, and feel how rock solid. I mean, these are, those are stiff as a board like you were talking about. Like That's what you in want. In store, they're not that stiff. They oh, break yeah. them in a little bit. A little bit, but... But, I mean, they're still pretty stiff. I mean, yeah, they're not they're pretty like, rock solid. And yeah, the 44s are stiffer than that when you get them, for sure. Uh, but that's what you want. That's definitely what you want. You don't want... Let, let's put it this way. You can go buy a $60, $70 dollar glove, and don't get me wrong. I would much rather you do that than go buy a $30 or $40 dollar glove. But when but, you say, hold on, when you say $60, $70 dollar glove, there are $60, $70 dollar gloves out there that are plastic. Mm -hmm. Don't buy them. Right. I, d I bought one, and I thought that it was going to be good. I thought that it felt a little too fakeish, if you will. Go buy a leather glove. Yep. Buy a leather glove because it will last longer than those little plastic ones. Right. I'll even say it, take it a step farther. What I'm saying is this. You can spend... Okay, and I've seen the, the genuine leather gloves that are like in the $75, $80 range, okay? Because I got Kellen's glove for, I think he was six, and he played with that until 10 you. Yeah, like... Because it was leather, but it, guess how much it was? It was 35 bucks. Uh, to your point, I got Dylan, uh, I just got him as 44, but I also, right around the same time I bought him, um, Rawling sells like a pro, they call it their pro light series. Um, they're imitations of the pro preferred. They're meant to look just like the pro preferred, but they're for, they're made for youth hands. They have the smaller hand cut on the inside of the glove. And they're also, um, Obviously made of much cheaper materials yeah. because they they cost sixty dollars brand new, and the pro preferreds are like three hundred and fifty dollars. So, um, I mean, you get what you pay for. That glove, don't get me wrong, it's not a terrible glove, um, but a it's not going to last more than maybe a couple years. If you were to use it every game, it, he'd be lucky to get two years out of it. Um, B, it's without even trying it's already starting to pancake like very easily and when mm -hmm. i say pancake if you don't know what i'm talking about like when you see a glove that's just flat that's not what you want folks you do not want to you see that so many i see so many pancake gloves and it drives me nuts every time i see one I don't lay want. it flat no do not and don't put gloves in your bat bags hang them off the side of your bat do whatever you got to do to keep them open but anyway that's a whole nother topic put but, them around your helmet yeah the great exactly so um but what i'm saying is you could go even a leather glove, like for 80 bucks, a genuine leather glove, you could buy one of those, and yeah, it'll probably get you two, three, maybe even four years out of it, or you can spend twice that, and so like I said, you're going to get four years out of it, say tops, then you have to turn around and buy another one four but at years that point, later. At that point, you have to turn around and buy another one anyway, because their hands are growing. Correct. Well, then... Yeah. It depends on what age they are. <sighs> Ooh, we well, just, oh, before I even get there, let me finish. What I'm saying is, let's just assume you bought it at, at nine years old and you're buying, oh, you're going to go a little bigger than what I would recommend for your average nine-year-old, an 11 and a half. You, would, don't need, you don't need anything bigger than 11 and a half until you're 11 years old. No, but I, that's, that. I mean, ideally, I'm sure I what I'm that, getting I'm not at, sure that would go that big. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm, what I'm getting at is... For a nine year old, I'd probably recommend like in an 11 and a quarter or an 11. Um, but let's just say you did what I did. I bought for his, Dylan's 44, I bought him an 11 and a half because, yeah, is that a little big for him at nine years old? Yeah. But at the same time, if I take care of this glove, which I'm going to, that glove will last him long enough that 11, I mean, 11, he can take that 11 and a half all the way until high school if well, you wanted to well you'll see you'll see major league players using 11 and a half glove right 
Infielders, obviously. But my but point in saying this is okay, middle infielders. So let's just assume that at yeah. nine years old you bought this eighty dollar glove, eleven and a half, and then four years later you got turned around by another eleven and a half because that's the size that you you like, your kid likes and he's going to stick with that. Mm-hmm. Now you've got one hundred sixty dollars invested. Or you could spend $160 once and get a glove that'll last him to eight years or but, more. But if you don't have or a lifetime, but again, if you don't have the 160 up front, that's the, that's I the thing. Or it. if you don't want to pay it, I and, get it. But. Because so what? What I what my argument is necessarily. I you gotta I, really think. I love I love 44 Pro gloves. I will not go anywhere else because I've had great success with the two that we own, um, and the the quality is phenomenal. But what I'm saying is at 9U, at 8U, at 7U, at whatever, it's okay to start off with those sure, right. sure. Those, those less expensive, more cost-effective, cost-efficient gloves. But my biggest thing is make sure that it's leather. If, you go to, if, if, you're, if, you're, if you're starting off at 8 or 9, even 10 for that matter, and you want to get a, a, a high-quality a high glove, if you go to Wilson, Wilson will sell you, and they'll tell you exactly what they're selling you by the number. If you go A2000, you're going to be spending about 350 bucks. If you go A2K, it's going to be about 325 And the number keeps going down un- until A550. The A550s are cheap, but they're leather. They're not going to last you more than two years, but they're, they're leather, good quality gloves for very cheap. Uh, I had a parent... Um, we had a we had like a a, a game or two game break in between yes. one tournament last year or two years ago, and we his, were just down the street from the and his kids his kids glove broke. He's like, oh, we need to go to Dick's and get another one. Well, last call, yeah, last call for Dick's, and uh, <laughs> so we ran we ran to Dick's Sporting Goods real quick. And I went with him because he didn't know what he was doing. He's like, "Well, I don't. What am I supposed? Like, Let's just go. We got time. Let's go." And um, I said, "I said I don't. I don't think money was really an issue for them, um, as far as that goes." But sorry. At the that same time, he. Uh, I, I'm not going to recommend him spend 100, you know, 350 bucks on a glove that's not going to be ready. Right. And I'm like. This one is a is a Wilson A eight hundred. Eighty bucks, high quality. Kids still using it. It's a good glove. Good glove. That's a good glove. Yeah, it's a good glove for for. for and I think you got cheap. it for even cheaper than that. I think yeah, it might have been like. But again, we're we're talking like probably a four year. Yeah. Glove, you know, four year shelf life. Which don't get me wrong, for eighty bucks, if you get four years out of a glove for eighty bucks. Was, you win. Basically- you win. If you're buying a glove that's game ready, you're not buying a high quality glove. But if you're talking about, you know, then that was when he was t- 10. 10. He was 10. Okay, so let's put that scenario two years later at 12, and your kid needs a glove. He'll use it until he's 14, until he's 13. Yeah. So, but but let's so let's but it's just depending on the, depending on what he's mm-hmm. what they're doing. If they get into high school, they could still be using that same glove. If he's going the route that I think he's going to go with, you know what? Go out and buy that little bit more, one that's a little bit more expensive, right? Because that will then last him throughout all of high school. You go to an A one thousand at that point, an A one K. Okay, I don't sure. I've never had a Wilson glove. I, I don't. You, I don't like Wilson that much. I, I don't. Like, I like. The, I don't like I, their leather. I like the high quality Wilsons. The okay. A2, the A two thousands. If you're going to buy a glove, if it's if it's not a Rawlings Pro preferred. Rawlings, Heart of the Hide, or Wilson A2000, or a 44. I'm not buying anything else. At this point in time, I'm not yes. buying another. I'm not buying anything but a 44. As I just yeah, said, I mean, but. honestly, I cannot possibly recommend somebody go spend 350 dollars on a Wilson Pro Preferred when you can get a glove that. Well, I wouldn't recommend it's going to be, it's going to be, it's gonna, it's gonna be way more than that because it's going to Wilson going to have to invent an entire glove for you. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, a Rawlings Pro Preferred. <laughs> Wilsons are always numbered. Yeah, Rawlings you are always I named. Meant. I did. We did. We're just being dicks. Yes, yeah. dicks. So, um, do we cover the breaking in? If no, you will, not no. We didn't. We didn't even touch on it. Okay. Um, that's why. That's why I recommend we getting we getting a glove now, or at least ordering it uh, Black Friday. Actually, you know, Black Friday is a good time. If you're gonna, if you, it if, won't be here for Christmas, right? So understand if you're, that. If you're parents. thinking forty four. 
If you're thinking 44, I don't know. Mine before. came the way, as fast as mine. Now, granted, they probably get a much higher oh, order, order volume. volume. Yeah, yeah, the volume's higher at, on Black Friday, but mine. It's came typically about a six-week lead time. Yeah, I I ordered mine on Black Friday. Mine came in on January sixth or fifth or fourth or third Same. or something. Yeah, I got mine in less than a month. Which is pretty unreal. That's really good. Yeah, but pretty you had unreal. like you had one color of leather. Yeah, that could have had something to do with yeah. it. And like I said, I ordered it at a not high volume time. I mean, you right. got to realize on Black Friday they're having a sale. They're gonna, you know. Mm-hmm. So anyway. Yeah, and it's it's a couple day sale, but they don't their their sales don't last for very long. So get 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 to it if you you know go on the Glove Builder now and look at it if you want. It's fun. Forty four Pro Gloves dot com. Forty four right? Pro. Yep, exactly. Good job. Yeah. Just be but, prepared because it's hard I, to go to that website and then not end up wanting one by the time you're done <laughs> playing around with it. Again, none of these none of these are sponsors. Okay, we don't have any sponsors at all. We're we're just telling you what we think. Okay, um, our experiences. Mm-hmm. Again, I would. I've owned a Nike glove. I've owned, or we've owned a Nike glove, if you will. We've owned two. a two of them. You're right. <laughs> Make it sound like we're in, <laughs> like we're a couple. I know, right? Sorry. <laughs> well, we we used both of them. Yeah. Um, and then the forty four. I've Kellen's had a Rawlings. That was his leather one to start with. Um, he would I, honestly, he would probably still have that one in use, or at least be able to be used. But uh, one of the strings on the webbing broke. Um, I have a hard time not going Rawlings. If I'm not going forty four, I'm not going, going Rawlings. 44. I think Rollins is what I mean. That's where the gloves are made. If I was looking to get off cheap, I would go Wilson. Um, I would go like a Wilson A eight hundred or yeah. or A A one K or something like that. Um, but if I'm looking to to spend a little bit extra scratch, right now my catcher's mitt is a Rawlings Heart of the Hide, and oh. I've been trying to break it in for a year and a half, <laughs> and it's still not even close. It's 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 no, close. it's not very close. No. <laughs> it closes. But, but when you first got it, it did not close. Catcher's, <laughs> no, it, it didn't budge. <laughs> catcher's mitts take much longer to yes. break in. It's very, especially very if important. you're not playing catch with them every day. So, mm-hmm. but, but the whole the whole process of breaking it in is yes. that something you wanted to go yeah, over? I did. Um, Coach Patrick and I are firm, firm, firm believers. I don't know where Logan stands, but I think um, he stands in the same thing. Absolutely, play catch with it. Don't take a mallet. That's dumb. <sighs> don't lay on it. Don't drive over it. Don't do any of those things. Play catch with I it. I prefer the get, get get your get the shaving cream off your glove and get it out of the oven. Play catch with it. Yeah. Um, There's no substitute for that. Uh, no, there is no substitute. Not only that, but it breaks in. It's to gonna the, shape it to your hand. To your player's hand. Yes. I do, if you're going to go anything other than play catch, which we don't recommend. But if you are, I, the mallet's better than steaming. If, if it's in your hand, if you have the glove on your hand and you're hitting it with a mallet, that's one thing. Yes, and squeezing as you're hitting it. I, 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 stop, I stop myself from saying whacking and squeezing. But, uh, <laughs> Not, but you just said You just it. want to squeeze the head and you want to whack it. <laughs> but no, whack. But don't just hit it. Just Pretend it's you're pretend you're catching a baseball. Sque- squeeze it as you hit it so that it's just like you would. And that's the only way to break the glove in. That's the whole point. If but, it's not broken in if you can't squeeze it. So. Right. Two, but, two, two, hand, two fingers in the pinky hole. We've already discussed that. Yep. Two in the mm-hmm. pink. And right. if you have if you have the opportunity to put your your pointer finger outside of the glove, I always do. Yes, do it. But again. <laughs> Much, that's that's a that's a big There's, preference. I even, still I even no, have a finger pad on my glove. I love yep. it. There's, I don't know if Kellen does it with his. Same, he has a pad though. He yeah. does have a pad, but there's still no substitute is. though for playing catch. Don't make, don't take me don't misconstrue what I'm saying. Play catch. All yeah, right, play catch. That's the best, by far the best way. And the the steaming, running it over, freezing it, putting it in the oven, dumb, dumb, dumber, and dumbest. I mean, I mean, it's just don't. Well, if you're gonna just uh-oh. don't. Oh, oh, it's over. Oh, no, are you kidding me? Is that fair? I don't know. They're going crazy like it. Oh, that's uh, foul. That's Red Sox foul. fan says They're foul. foul. Jeez. Sorry, folks. Sorry, <laughs> folks. Crazy World Series game we're watching here. Should not even be on right now. Should have been over about an hour and a half ago. Oh, this is game four. Oh, man. Not the, much. He just hooked it, man. He just hooked it. You, oh. should, you should. I mean, this is going to end up. 
you should get credit for wins for games three and four because this is <laughs> this is going to end up going this is 18. <laughs> eighteen innings, man. This is we're in the fifteenth, and Max Muncy can't seem to hit a ball fair. Ah, uh, that yeah, oh. Oh. but <laughs> there it is. So, um, play catch with it. That's uh, that was really weird. Uh, uh, here's one thing I'll tell you too. Actually, real quick, just to finish, put a bow on this. Um, <laughs> yeah. You see a lot of people uh, wanting to put like the rubber bands around the gloves. Anything you do to artificially close the glove is going to make it pancake. Well, here's what I'll say about especially that. running it over the car. Yeah, don't do Who that. Who started that's a, that? That's a horrible idea. Um, you put it, a ball in it first, from what I've heard. I <laughs> trust me. Trust me, I, it's. I'm, first of all, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put your balls in front of the car for, next time you tell um, me. I was, just, I was gonna say, first of all, I would never. Uh, that's putting my glove on concrete <laughs> and underneath a rubber tire. My glove's gonna just get scratched up and stuff. And I know it's going to eventually, yeah. but I want to be the one scratching it, if not I, the concrete. If you throw my glove to me and it doesn't make it all the way, we're fighting. <laughs> um. <laughs> on the spot, <laughs> because not only not only is it getting dirty and scratched up. Now all of a sudden I got dirt inside the glove and it's so uncomfortable to wear. Ugh. If you're gonna do that too, um, go actually spend the money. Go buy the Rawlings kit that comes with the softball sized plastic ball, and it has an extra fat wrap that goes around. Because if you're just using rubber bands, you're you're squeezing on pressure points. You're gonna create uneven. Um, pressure on the glove and it's gonna that's actually He's gonna do way too much research that's gonna actually this. gonna do more damage to your look glove what you than, did to him uh, look what you uh, did to him fault. it is all your <laughs> this fault this is my fault all of your fault um and they're also the reason you want to use that plastic ball is because if you're going to use a don't use a baseball actually a baseball is actually bad that it's actually going to cause your glove to swamp in um and that's bad if you're gonna use a softball it'll softballs will absorb the, if you're going to use oil softballs will absorb that oil and kind of defeat the purpose of using the oil. So um, just things to think about. Little but things. Again, nothing. Re- Stuff I've never that, thought about. <laughs> nothing that re- none of that <laughs> replaces playing catch at all. Lastly, lastly, when you're done playing catch with it, don't set it on its side. On its, like on the, on the, on the fingers. Don't set it on the back of the fingers where the palm, like, like if it was on your hand, you'd be sitting it on the back of the, I mean, that's going to come to the pancake. I set mine up on the tips of the fingers. Yep, it's starting to get to the point where it won't stand up on the tips of the fingers. So I set it on the on the on the side of the thumb, on the, the edges, side of the, yeah, on the edges, um, where the pocket's facing the ground. Exactly. That way, it keeps it open. Also, if you want to leave it open, if you curl the thumb of your glove, I'm going to hit you in the face. <laughs> yes, curl it's, it in. Do not curl the thumb at all. At all, okay. If you're going to curl it, curl it out. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm, I was just going to say. I mean. Uh, but a little no, tiny bit, just winging it, not like yeah. obviously. And a lot of that depends on what position. Like yeah. outfielders will, you'll typically see them. You can see he's got his winged a little bit there, Evaldi. Yeah. But outfielders, you'll typically see them have theirs, you know, kind of flared out a little bit, just because it allows for a larger catching surface. Right. Um, Infielders, it's probably more straight than it is anything, just because yeah. that gives you know that, that less of you know it curls the ball into it almost a little bit more. Yeah. Um, I, I just, I've, I've seen it so many times where somebody gets a glove on their hand and they start curling in the thumb and I'm like, uh, like, like we went to the store, got this, this, the, the new glove for this kid, his, his glove broke and his uncle showed up to the game and he, oh, look at my new glove, Unc. And he grabbed it, put it on his hand and started curling the thumb. I'm like, oh, thank God I'm on this side of the fence because I want to punch you in the face. <laughs> I think you would have to. I was close. I was so mad. You were. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I mean, I mean, one of our coaches had like three gloves that all were curled in on the thumb. Um, but <laughs> we're not going to talk about that right now. <laughs> you know, I curled mine in. I was. I didn't know. Yeah. Not my, I didn't. Not my, not my forty-four. And, but. Under, understand. Understand. What did he just say? I don't know. He says that a lot. Okay. But. <laughs> hey, but at least he's willing to say it. No, this is that's the point of this. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that I didn't know either. There's a lot of stuff that he didn't know. Now we do know. Okay. So now we're getting. And now you know. Now we're trying to pass it on. Right. Okay? Exactly. We're saving you the heartache of doing stuff, making some of the mistakes that. Yep. Yeah. If you're honestly, I I would I always take the middle 
right right at the right at the edge of the thumb in the middle of the pocket and fold that down that just helps the pocket that helps deepen the pocket a little bit too deep in the pocket absolutely I, and i still do it even my gloves completely broken in 100 percent, and i habit. still i still do it okay all right um with that being said I think we kind of hit th- that one, hit that one home. I think that's it. I know we're going to come back. We're probably going to talk talk some more about some of that other stuff that we didn't get to, especially two out, two strike hitting. Yeah, yep. we, we just really didn't get to that. that. So um, we'll come back. We'll dive into that next time. Next week. See you guys later. Thank you. Later. Thanks, Joe Boo. Tell a friend. Have a great week.